Okay, my friends, Roger coming to you from here in the middle of a thunderstorm. You hear that thunder rumbling in the background? Nothing more than electricity. And what is electricity? Well, electricity is also light. And what is it also? It's heat. Alright, and we're going to go into this new theory of light electricity, electrons, the nucleus, the atomic model. The Bohr theory was the atomic model in the past and it had a huge proton, a huge neutron, and then it had a couple of little particles. And that was supposed to be it. Well, it didn't work out. They found all kinds of things they never expected just recently from the same stage that Mendeleev talked about capacitance they just said, hey, nothing here is right. Now, you know, the capacitance is, I understand capacitance, I understand resistance, I understand voltage and amperage, and I understand all those things. They're very simple. And I also understand ether, which they don't. Ether is the extra electrons that are in everything. And they are literally heat is extra electrons and a lot of ether in solid things and in the air. There's a lot of electrons, and they collect on you as static and discharge the ground. The ground wants them because the ground is electrically attractive. That's because we are spinning our electrons inside of a soup of electrons, which is called our atmosphere, the ionosphere, the magnetosphere. The vacuum of space is not a vacuum. It's loaded with these particles and we're scrubbing through them creating electricity creating our magnetic field creating a flow from south to north through our pole that is gravity it's pulling the electrons down the more electrons in the more less confined space the harder it hits the earth case closed hydrogen doesn't have enough in the space it's in it goes away it's be, act, literally being pushed away from earth same thing with helium then you get up to lithium, it starts to float down to earth. Now, and then you take electricity, which is electrons, right to earth. You say earth ground. They, if you, it will go to ground before it goes through you. That's why everything is grounded to the earth. Because that will always accept electricity. It wants electricity because it pulls anything with electrons down. As <laughs> simple as that. Now, so what happens with static? You collect it on you, and it's just electrons. It's floating around in the air attached to water molecules primarily. They have a little um, polar attachment. They, they grab a hold of water molecules. Uh, um, actually, uh, extra electrons. The water molecules grab a hold of extra electrons. They have sort of little things hanging off them that grab them. Now, when it's dry though, and you start to lose all these water molecules, then those electrons need to go somewhere and they will attract to anybody that's, they'll just lay around and they'll go to you and then they will es escape from you to ground if possible. If you have rubber shoes on, they're not going to go until you touch them. Pew! And when it snaps, you can feel it because it's nothing but electrons. Just done. Lightning, same thing. It's beating its way through whatever molecules are in the air. So that's cooking. You can hear it and 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 you burn and all that. But it's nothing more than the electrons themselves. So they can be disassociated. Now, in electron flood theory, we're going to look at what's going on. And here's the light research that we did. Rod Warren and I did this a while back. And here's the Here's the light coming through a pulse red laser. So it is light. Case closed. It's light. There's this, that's all it is. It's not shooting bricks out of here. Now here is where this light starts to accelerate because there's a venturi here. And a venturi is two round cylinders here. One here and one right next to it. And it forces everything to go into that and it ends up pulling that wave forward. Well, it's not even a wave, really. It looks like a wave, the same way a jet fighter looks like a wave when it comes through the air. But it's only the jet fighter in the middle. Same thing here. That's the particle. 
And now, as it starts to concuss against the other ones, forcing everybody through, it starts to glow. That's what happens. That's when something concusses. When light concusses, it glows. The harder it concusses, the harder the more it glows. See here, it's going through the air, so it's everybody's sort of getting out of the way. They're glowing a little bit, but when it gets into where it's really getting getting restricted, it starts to glow. And if it hit a wall here, it would just same thing. But here it's being actually accelerated into a condition where the black particles will actually leave the white particles. That is the key. In electron flood theory, you have electrons are positive and negative, but only the white negative part is explosive. Now I'm going to show you this and then I'm going to show you the light experiments to prove it. I think they prove it quite well. There's going to be a new nucleus, because the nucleus doesn't work now. There's no big protons and big neutrons. They're all electrons in that nucleus clustered together until you have a ball of them that is a certain number, and that certain number is what we would call an element, an atom. It's a certain type of an atom, but it becomes stable at oops certain numbers of electrons just what it does now we know this already but we always thought they were big protons and neutrons they're not they're electrons now so an electron though is a positive and a negative and what it has i'm going to draw it out right here what it has is here's your negative part and that is explosive and here's your positive part and that's just like dead weight. Now when this crashes into something, the white will crash into another white particle and those two will glow like crazy and the black ones will walk right away. And I'm going to show you that in experiments. I can show you exactly what I'm talking about. No guesses here. Now, well there is a great so <laughs> some guesses. <laughs> Right. I'm guessing that the universe is made of the same things everything's made of here, and that is to my world 100% of all, uh, all electrons. There's nothing but them. They add together to make all kinds of different matter and different metals and different minerals and different salts and different acids, obviously. But they all are starting from here. It works when you do this. And I can tell you, I have a lot of research on it. It does work. So every electron is a plus and a minus. However, this is the, the plus side, and it has no explosiveness. It's got one electron volt only. You can smash that as hard as you want together. It's a one electron volt. I'm not, that's, that's all I'm doing. Now, then you have this white one, which is like a balloon it's, that it pushes in and out. Consider this like a piece of lead. It hits and goes, Dup, and they just drop to the floor. This is like a, a Super Bowl. And that's the negative part. It has extreme, extreme explosiveness. So it starts out at one volt attached to this one, just like normal. But once it concusses with another one, you can go millions of volts. I don't know how high you can go. Now, these will attach together. So the, the plus will, a minus attaches here. And then the plus and the minus reverse will attach here. So you get back to back. All right, and that's what we call light. And that, that spins. And it spins because these concussive particles hit and, and it starts to flip. So it, as it goes forward, it'll hit here and it'll just start to spin. That's the nature of light. And I can show that too. I can show this. I show everything. Now, hydrogen has one what we always thought was one proton and one electron floating around it. Well, I'm going to try to do, draw what is in the nucleus, even of a hydrogen, but they will all start the same way. And that is, don't forget now, hydrogen has about 1,900 electrons, or it might have half of that. I'm not exactly sure how this plays out because this is pretty, pretty new. <laughs> now, so what we have here, remember, we got a black and a white. So this one right here, there's a black and there's the white that goes with it. See it? There's the black and there's the white that goes with it. The blacks can be right up tugged against each other. They, no problem. They, they, they don't bother each other because they don't have any explosiveness. They won't push. 
This, you can't push that against the other white one. You can't push that against the other white one. That's like a magnet when you try to push it together and it's going the wrong way. It, ooh, ooh, ooh. That's what happens now. But the black ones will just form their, their unit right there in the center. They don't care. They, they, they're happy being touching. So then what happens? Well, you can't, these two won't go together, so you're going to get a black one that's going to go right in the center of those two. The same thing that'll happen here, the same thing that'll happen here, the same thing that'll happen here. But that has to be attached to a white one, so it's here. And this white one is here, and this white one is here, and this white one is here. So then what happens? Now, you're going to have a black one here and a black one here, because can't, you can't have a white one touching this one, you can't have a white one here. And the same thing's going to happen here, a black one here, and a black one here, a black one here, and a black one here, a black one here, and a black one here. Now they all have to have whites. So you're going to have a white, a white, a white, and, and then it'll, it'll just keep growing that way until you get up to like 1900 bits. And that's your nucleus. And then you're going to have one out here. So this will be all filled with these until you end up, you're going to have all, all negatives on the outside. Right? And that is what creates the quantum effect to keep this, because this is going to push that. The white will push that. Case closed. Now, then you have your S orbitals where you have only one of these here and one over here. And then you go into your P orbitals where you have, like, they go into what they call a rule of eight. But it's, this is what's going to happen, is every one of these will push each other apart because the white will push the other white. Now, let me prove this. Let's just go into the proof of Z-putting. All right, I'm going to go deeper, but let's just start with this six panel. Here, here is the light. There's only a particle here, but it's a concussive wave that comes through the air. Because those little tiny particles actually have a magnetic region that surrounds them that is absolutely enormous, but then it's actually the, the particle is there. So here we got acceleration. I don't think anybody could possibly not understand that. That's the wave, that's the particle, it's stretching, and then it finally just pulls itself right out from the concussiveness going so fast that nobody can react, and then it explodes. All right. Now, it goes through the Venturi, remember, it's forced in, and this is something that's fully understood. Carbureted engines used to do it, and they would create atomization on the other side. Same thing this is doing, only this is atomization of actually electrons. Electrons are being separated, and I can show you this, and I will. And this is coming out from the accelerator this way. These are what they call bosons or, you know, and they create these Higgs fields because this little particle is a particle. It's spinning a zillion miles an hour and these are additional particles that surround it that are reacting to the spin of this tiny, it's going this, it's, it's this size. It's zip. Well, what's happening around that, it's spinning so fast that the particles that surround it are, are glowing just the way they glowed over here when they, they were surrounding it. And this is it's going so fast that they are doing that. Now, then we had this. This is the strangest thing. Now, that is smaller than light, and it was from light. <laughs> Everything here was light, so don't tell me it's not light. And don't tell me this could be anything, because it's something that came from light. And I'll show you the pictures that CERN asked for. They say they call these electron neutrinos, and then they call them Higgs fields. So I got all that stuff. I'll show you. But this particle came backwards through the accelerator. It's supposed to be a right-hand rule. This came backwards, and I believe it gathered the field into itself, and then it smashed into this, and started to create its own field and 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 reestablish itself as a particle, particle, not an antiparticle. Now. This is what light looks like. Remember I said um, they have a, a plus and a minus side? This is just like this. And they're back-to-back -back electrons. It's like a box of electrons here. There's, two, there's either two or four of them. I'm not sure. I really, you know, it's like I said, this is kind of new. But I believe that, well, I can show you for a fact, the black does not have the concussion explosiveness, and the white does. Now, uh, this shows the particle coming through here. Now, this is blue laser. Again, Rod did these, these pictures and sent them to absolutely phenomenal work. 
and uh, so I think this was a, a blue because uh, he had green and red and uh, I guess he did blue too now this you can see it's expanded down here and it's compressing up here it's obviously accelerated now I don't know exactly how he got such spectacular images but I believe this is literally the electron concussive part of the electron these are literally other electrons that were just floating in the air and they're being pulsed as this thing goes by and they show up as trails that literally they're just like this one two three four five six as this thing spins that's what I'm seeing could be wrong uh, now let me show you why I can say that the, the white can separate from the black all right there's the black particles See, it? they're all over the place. And they can touch each other. They don't care. They're, they're fine with that. The white, absolutely not. It's explosion city here. But you see all the little black ones. They're all over the place. And then they'll come back in. And here they're starting to settle back in again. Which is, I believe, what we saw as they come back together. They come back together as that box. I'm pretty sure CERN would pretty much flip out if they could see electron neutrinos and electron showers. Well, we have them. That's what we have. That's a high-voltage electron, which is light. The light made a high-voltage electron. It smashed into the air, which was nothing more than low-voltage electrons laying around, and you get the bowling ball effect, which is the cherry and off radiation electron shower. That's what it is. That's what I showed you. Now CERN hits theirs head on, and they're using protons and neutrons, they call them, these big chunks of electrons. And then they get chunky chunks of electrons, and so they have to dig through them and try to find the little bits. We're starting with the littlest bits because they're light. So when they splatter out, we're seeing the effect of what light turns into. They're seeing the same looking effects but they're seeing them in big clumps and globs of things they're spinning but they're kind of nasty looking compared to ours ours are much more elegant because they are the tiniest of the tiny so all i can say cern is read them and weep rodney warren's work right there my friend higgs feels in motion All right, now this just goes back a couple of months ago. They finally admitted that the standard model is wrong. And she just explained about leptons and quarks and so forth. So now let's just listen to what she has to say. Here goes. If the wrong, then so is the standard model, and so is our understanding of particle physics. So we really have to make sure about it. Now, one way that lepton universality can be tested is to look how often particles... Well, we don't have to go through that. I think it's out here 345, somewhere around there. She finally admits it. Here goes. It seems to be violated. Well, what that means is that there's something wrong with the standard model. That's it. We found the crack, finally, in our understanding of particle physics. There's absolutely no way that we can explain this observation with our current understanding. In fact, the only way we think we can explain what's going on is if there are new particles in the universe. As so all right, see, well, let me just go back on. Associated with new physics processes beyond those that we understand. Uh, All right, th here's their issue. They're going to go look for some new particle thinking that everything's good except there's more particles than we thought. No, there is less particles than they thought. They're all electrons, and they can come into a chunk of this size or a chunk of this size or a single one. That's all it is. Then you can make all of these things. The elegance is just unbelievable. And by the way, I think I said something about uh, Mendeleev, and I said capacitance. This is the guy that capacitance is um, um, Faraday, microfarads. 350 volt, that's a powerful 22 microfarads. Okay, that's the key. Everything is made of electrons. Electron flood theory forever!